you know, but I, I think we've all heard that argument before. So it's uh, it, it was really mind blowing. I mean, and and these high frequency firms have uh, really taken over the how how these markets work. Um, there's estimates that say that the high high frequency funds account for sixty to seventy percent of the volume on the U.S. stock market. That's frightening. Absolutely frightening. The dark pool. Speak about what a mm-hmm. dark pool is. This was an important sure. part of your book. By the way, uh, what shocked me was arbitrage. I thought arbitrage was illegal. Uh, no, arbitrage is a is perfectly legal, and it, and it makes sense. I, I think maybe uh, you know there could be some nefarious uh, you know ways of doing arbitrage, but you know basically arbitrage is just figuring out that one uh, you know a, a, the same security is priced differently in different uh, different parts of the market. Right. And you you buy one and you short the other until the they come together and, and it is a perfectly legitimate way of, of uh, investing and it makes it actually can make the market uh, more rational and more efficient um, it can be dangerous because if you always believe that those securities are, are going to uh, come together and this is something that the the giant hedge fund uh, long-term capital management did in in the late 90s uh, their entire investment strategy was based on arbitrage and finding out where discrepancies in different securities were around the world and betting that they would converge. And they ended up making using massive leverage to make those bets. And then something unexpected happened, and the arbitrage that they were expecting did not occur. It actually went in reverse, just like the quant funds in August 2007. Um, this is what happens when people panic. Uh, the rational stuff doesn't happen. Um, so, re- so arbitrage is a you know tried and true method of making money, but it also can be very dangerous when you're using a lot of leverage. Um, but you asked about the dark pools. The, these are electronic uh, crossing networks. Uh, they're off exchange uh, networks where shares tra- change hands. Um, in the dark, basically, they're pools of stocks, and they uh, they started up um, some time ago in order to uh, for big firms like pension funds to trade large blocks of stocks. Uh, and and that it made sense because if a pension fund wanted to buy, uh, you know, say a hundred million worth of Microsoft, and that that. Uh, you know, was got around on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange that could cause the price to move. So they were trying to uh, create a, a method where stock big blocks could tra- uh, change hands without causing the price to move too much. How do you become a player in a dark pool? Um, you, well, almost anybody can be a player in a dark pool. You know, any investment fund, uh, you know, they all use it. The, these things have proliferated so much that, you know, if you have a if you have a, a mutual fund, there's no question that your uh, portfolio manager is investing in dark pools. Uh, you know, they they need to because these things have become a major part of the market. Ten percent of all stock volume now happens in dark pools. Uh, what the SEC is concerned about, and and other critics are concerned about, is that there, are, you know, because these things are uh, largely unregulated, and uh, the trades happen in the dark, that there are uh, firms that are gaming the trades in in the dark pools, and it's right now almost impossible to know if that's actually happening. And, I, and I've talked to a number of people. Do you think it is happening and have seen it happen? Um, basically, what what you know, a high frequency fund can see something happening on you know some place like the New York Stock Exchange where a stock is moving, and it takes uh, a, a fraction of a second for that price to get to the dark pool. The high frequency fund can calculate that movement faster than it the time it takes for that information to get to the dark pool, so they can front run that order. And, uh, you know, this is something that I think the SEC is becoming aware of, but uh, it's, it's pretty scary. And, and this is just, you know, the, uh, you know, just scratching the surface. Who really knows what's going on? 
in in these uh, markets with where things are go- you know happening so fast and in the dark. Um, so it is it is a big concern. How does it alter industries, or how could it alter industries? This kind of activity. I think that you know, gaming is something that uh, it, it affects the ability of companies to raise money, essentially, in in the most efficient way. If their if their stocks are being um, manipulated uh, detrimentally, um, that could make it dif- more difficult for a company to issue shares and uh, get as much capital as they would like. Um, but you could also have the reverse. You could have uh, a, uh, a fund causing stocks to go up um, more than they should, and then the company could raise more. So it's it's difficult to really know uh, how you know what the impact is on industries. But I, I think that uh, where and you could see a real impact is on you know the the portfolios of uh, you know people trying to save for their retirements. Um, that and that's a real concern. Is are uh, are these super fast traders, sophisticated mathematical traders, uh, picking people's pockets by you know it will be just pennies per trade, but it can really add up. And uh, you know this is something I think that a lot of people are trying to figure out is what is the uh, what is the fallout of all of this trading? And and there is you know when there there is a positive side to some of this. I don't want to ignore that because. The, the trading cost, the actual cost of uh, transacting a trade on the market has come down fairly dramatically in the past 10 years or so. And one of the reasons for that is because of these high-frequency uh, traders, they uh, you're, you're essentially bypassing the middlemen who used to be the brokers for trades, um, and those guys charged a fairly high fee. The high-frequency firms, because they're able to do this quicker, are uh, not charging as high of a fee. So, uh, so there is a benefit, and even firms like Vanguard Group, uh, the the big mutual fund company, have said you know that they think that it, this is a good thing. But I, I think that there are costs embedded in the system that a lot of people aren't seeing, and uh, and I think that'll come out soon. Who's making the decisions when a high-frequency trader is trading? Is it the Mm -hmm. software that's being programmed to execute the decisions? Is it automated, or is it the trader? It's completely automated. Are you serious? Yeah, it's uh, these these things happen way faster than a human being could uh, contemplate. You know, these these are algorithms. and you know it's something that i've uh, i've found is that the you know the entire stock market now i not all, maybe 70% or 80% of it trading is uh conducted by algorithms so even your mutual fund manager is probably going to be using algorithms um to trade because of the way that the market is structured now you can't just send an order to uh, the New York Stock Exchange and expected to get filled. It needs to be uh, broken up into little pieces and sent around to all these different parts of the market. Um, a lot, and a lot of this is because of the the presence of the high frequency firms. Um, if if you were to come out and uh, and try to buy, say, ten thousand shares of Google, um, it's going to cause the stock to move because the high-frequency firms have algorithms that are uh, sort of like sniffer algorithms looking for trades like that, they're going to cause the price to move up really quickly. So it's a, it's a game within the game now. You, the, the traders are trying to hide from the high-frequency firms, and the high-frequency firms are trying to see what the traders are, are doing. And it's, uh, it's a complete transformation of the market, to be honest. It's, and, and I don't think a lot of people understand this. It's morphed into something else, hasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, the computers are going head to head. It's you know, kind of like uh, I don't know, Cyberdyne systems and the Terminator. <laughs> People are using computers, and and that's that's it. That's what that's the direction the market's going. And and the you know what a lot of firms are doing now is they are uh, there. There's this thing called co-location, and essentially what that is is getting a. Uh, 
a server, a very powerful computer server, and setting it up right next to 